this is this is this is Right on, right on. You tell me how this goes. You're the master here. (laughs) Dude, I just, by the way, thanks for taking the time, Michael. Um, Do you prefer Michael? Is that how you? Uh, That's fine with me. Mike or Michael is good. Okay, okay. Yeah. Um, I just saw, I, so I just saw your, your post on the MXPX Facebook group and I was, I was like tripped out like, whoa, you know, um, we'll talk all about, you know, naked and afraid and all that stuff. But, yeah, yeah, yeah. but getting into it with Bob, like I was like, Hey Bob, you know, like help me out. And he sent me like some little article about you on, uh, your food boat. Yes. The yes. Hungry Dutchman. So yeah, I mean, we'll talk, yes. I- I'd love to talk all about it. Um, all right. man, dude. So nice to meet you. How you doing, Michael? I'm Michael as well. I'm, I'm great. I, yeah. Mike, Mike, great names, you know, Dude, so uh, you're in Fort Lauderdale or near? Yeah, I'm Fort Lauderdale. Uh, I'm Fort Lauderdale, Florida. Just uh, where it's usually sunny right now, it's not. We're getting a uh, monsoon right now, so we're uh, flooded out. I don't know if Bob sent me some pictures that I sent him earlier, but uh, it's pretty bad down here. <laughs> he didn't send me any pictures. He didn't tell me anything about the flooding, but I knew about the flooding already. I've just <laughs> been hearing about the insane floods happening in Fort Lauderdale. So, oh yeah, oh, man. Yeah. So, so it is good that you have a boat. <laughs> <Stay> <laughs> Absolutely. Afloat. Absolutely. That's well, I, correct. I hope it doesn't get too bad down there for you guys. Um, but uh, yeah. hopefully you're just going to ride it out for a little bit. Floridians, you know, you guys are used to the hurricanes, all the storms, alligators. You know, I mean, you know we're the crazy ones. We, crazy. we get everything. What was it? Um, bath salt. People on bath salt. <laughs> so walking around. <laughs> walking around eating each other's faces. Yeah. <laughs> Uh, I feel yeah, like, right. yeah, if the zombie apocalypse happens, it's probably starting yeah. in Florida or somewhere close. hundred percent. I'll agree with that. <laughs> <laughs> right on, right on. Right, well, l- I don't know where we begin because, you know, we, we'll, of course, talk about Naked and Afraid, uh, but I almost want st- to keep talking about Florida. Um, let's talk about how you ended up in Florida and how you ended up being the captain of your own food boat. Um, so I moved here. You want like from the beginning? Hey man, however you want to do it, let's go. You know, All right. it's All up right, to you. Let's go. Let's go. So I moved here when I was 12. Um, you know, been here, never left. Uh, went to school here. Um, just a local, you know, just kind of deal. Um, <clears throat> I started working for, uh, companies on the water, uh, and maritime and just learning, you know, I'm not a boater. I didn't grow up with any boats or anything like that. So it was all brand new. I was actually in the uh, medical field prior to my boating career. Um, and then, you know, I had my two best friends and one of them approached me and was like, hey, you know, there's this uh, boat that's for sale and, uh, you know, we can make a company out of this. And I was like, you know what, uh, we're only we're only going to be able to do this once. So let's go ahead and, and, and go check it out. We drove all the way to Tennessee, checked it out, bought it that day. And uh the rest is history. I mean, after that, we just, so, you know, meeting after meeting and building and building of a brand. And, and yeah, now here we are. I would love to talk about some of that branding stuff, some about the business stuff. Oh, yeah. How did, so, so these guys that you knew, like, is this from, <laughs> from high school, from college, from working jobs? How do you know these guys? Um, so there are two of my good friends. Um, one of them, I dated her for a little bit. Um, and sorry we are guys, just really girls. Good friends. <laughs> <laughs> so we, uh, we, uh, worked together before for the pre for a previous company. And, uh, my other partner, she worked with him elsewhere on cruise lines. Um, so she kind of knew both of our strengths and she was like, you know, you can fix it. You can make it float and you can drive it. You know, you can cook cause you're a chef and, you know, I'm hospitality and, you know, I'm, I'm the charmer and I can make things happen. And, um, you know, really just all three parts came together and just blended. And, uh, I mean, that, that's, that's pretty much it. You know, I mean, we all want to be part of the community and, you know, we love being on the water and, uh, we actually, the day we bought the boat, we had gotten fired from our jobs. So we're like, all right, it's do or die. We have to do this now. It's now or never. Um, so it's, it's been a uh, work in progress ever since, but so far it's been, uh, it's been great. Every day gets better and better. And, uh, you know, we get to spend, all this time on the water together as friends. That's amazing. Who could ask for more? Yeah. So So it's on, it's on our terms. So it's called the hungry Dutchman. What's, what's it like? What, so, so tell us what the business is, where it is, where you can, what, what people get, what people do. What's the, what's the routine? 
for you? All right. Um, so what it is is, you know, we're a food truck, but we're on the water, so we're floating. Um, so what we do is we go to the sandbars, um, you know, down here. It's the yachting capital of the world in Fort Lauderdale, so there's lots of boats. Uh, we go down there and we just cook up good, fresh food that we make the day of. And, uh, you know, we have fun while doing it. And uh, we also cater parties, you know, for the p- folks that have docks in their backyards and they want a different kind of experience. Uh, you know, we can help them out with that. Um, that's pretty much it. I mean, we've got hot dogs, hamburgers, but they're not your standard ones. You know, there are specialty ones. So we have Captain D's burger, uh, which has our specialty sauce on it. We have the Colombian burger, the, the uh, Havana hot dog. It's got pickles on it and cheese. And um, we've got pulled pork. We've got crab cakes, uh, ceviche made with coconut. I mean, just we, we try to be different. And uh, we all love food. You know, one of our partners is a chef. So um, we love to cook and we love to eat. Nice. Okay. So what is yeah, your, yeah. so what's your, your expertise in this situation? Um, so to fix the boat, make it float and to keep, uh, keep on your going. I drive it, you know, I, uh, I just make sure we're all safe. You know, some the, the driver, the engineer, the mechanic, whatever you want to call it. Um, you know, that's pretty much my, my deal. And then any other support, you know, I also, we have a smaller boat that delivers the food to the boats. So you don't actually have to come to us. We can come to you. Um, you know, I'll drive that and deliver the food as well. Um, so yeah, I mean, that's, that's pretty much, pretty much it. Just bopping around on the water. You're the captain. Yeah, man. So Absolutely. You, you tell people, I am the captain now. <laughs> I am the captain now. <laughs> I am the captain now. <laughs> so Usually you, this is your forte, but you know, yeah, we're here now. That's funny. So you guys actually did what people do in the movies. They talk about like, you know, let's get together. Let's, you know, let's start our own business in paradise. Do what we love to do. Oh, yeah. You're doing that. Just so yeah. happens to be in, in the town you've kind of grew up in, you know, yeah. the last half of your yeah. life. Yeah, exactly. Exactly. That's it. I mean, that's, that's it right there in a nutshell. I mean, do you ever, we, we dreamed and we made it happen. You know? How long you been doing this? The food boat. Yeah. The food boat. Uh, this upcoming weekend will be our fifth weekend in operation. So it's kind of so, new. It's brand new. Whoa, okay, <laughs> brand new. okay, okay. Well, we need, okay. Well, we'll, we'll, we'll tell everybody. We'll make this happen. Um, <laughs> I'm just wondering when you guys are coming down here next so I can feed you guys. <laughs> I know, I know. You got to cater the next gig. All I'm right, saying, we're going gonna, to, we'll play on the water so you can come to us on the water. Hey, That's amazing. I'll even come to you on land, but I'd love it. I'd love it. I'd love to see you guys out here. I don't get to see you guys enough out here, and, and uh, I would love it. All right, so the weather's crazy, but what I was saying is 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 punk rock. I love how punk rock kind of permeates more than just punk rock itself as music. You know, it 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 gets into the culture. It gets into the culture, especially of service of uh, a lot of chefs, busboys, cooks or cooks or chefs, I guess, but uh, servers, <laughs> you see, uh, drivers, you know, delivery people, construction workers, painters, you know, service, you know, all of that, like. That's all, I mean, that's what I'd be doing if I wasn't doing music. I'd be some sort of like either food service, uh, painting, you know, I, I would find something probably to do with my hands and to do with people or something, you know. It's, it's funny that, that I, I'm, I'm doing a lot of the work that I do by myself because being in a band, it's a, it's a group situation, but, um, but I, I don't want to digress. I, I definitely want to hear more about how you guys built this, and it's so new that uh, you're going through it right now. Which hopefully this is good timing. You know, help help get the word at least to a few MXPX fans down in Florida. Um, if you guys are, I love it when MXPX fans support other MXPX fans. So, absolutely, it's the coolest thing. I mean, yeah, I. I uh before I even, you know, got the tattoo on my forearm and stuff, you know, I used to see online, you know, some, some people posting and show your tats, you know, show your face. And I was like, man, yeah, that's really cool. Cause it was kind of like a little, little community, you know what I'm saying? You, you were, you were, you were proud to show and represent, you know, who you, who you were about, you know? And, uh, so, I mean, I think it's, it's great. And, you know, I think that punk rock is, is everywhere. And I think it's also great. Uh, it's amazing, you know, because it's not just punk rock, it's everywhere. Yeah, you know, and everybody can listen to it, and you know, you just got to find the parts that you love the most. You know, whether it's the lyrics or the chord progressions or the instruments itself, and you know, 
Um, I mean, you know. <laughs> <laughs> but yeah, no, no, it's it's good. It's good. I love it's it. Definitely good. So, how did yes. you guys? I'm bringing that into the Hungry Dutchman and mm-hmm. preparing everything for the business to open. I mean, you guys must have been kind of just winging it in a lot of ways, doing things you'd never done before. Wow. I mean, that's what being in a punk band is, is about. So, I mean, can you talk to in, any of those experiences you had uh, leading up to opening? Um, the experiences from, you broke up a little bit, but they, I mean, you talk, you're asking uh, about what, how did the music influence it? Uh, I was asking about how, like, no, it wasn't about it. I was, I was just saying okay. that being in a punk band, you have to kind of just do things you don't actually know how to do. And right. I feel like starting your own business is the same. You're doing things you've never done before. And I was just asking if there's anything that sticks out that you were learning for the first time that was really hard that you're like, okay, we, we conquered that. Uh, I mean, one, one of the things would definitely have to be all the permitting, you know, all the licensing and things like that. You know I mean? It's not just, Hey, I got a boat, you know, I got a grill and I can make some awesome food. And, you know, all of a sudden you're selling, you know, it's these, these, obstacles that you have to come uh, come over and you know uh figure out and make work you know uh, especially being a mobile food vendor they look at you very differently than your standalone uh brick and mortar building business you know um right. so I-, I would have to say that you know you're always on your toes and every time you enter a new city or anything like that it's more permits and you know that kind of stuff so i, I, w- I would say that just i didn't realize that there was so much that you had to do and figure out and you know we're kind of the first ones doing that so there's nobody to go to and be like hey you know how'd you do this or how'd you do that you know it's, it's all trial by error on our part you know so yeah. and it's just, it's the same you know i mean i like you said being in punk rock you know you sometimes you don't know certain things and you gotta you know pick it up on the fly or you learn and i'm a musician myself um i started on bass went you know all over the place guitar piano this that and uh everything's always different. It's a learning process with that. Every time you pick it up, it's a learning experience if you let it be, but you got to let it be. Absolutely. 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 I love it. Absolutely. (laughs) Well, I mean, what else do you want to talk about lately? I mean, I want to talk about the branding, like flying Dutchman or that that's what it's, it's kind of the hungry Dutchman flying Dutchman. Is that, there's any correlation to that? It is a hundred percent. And when we sat down and we were talking about, you know, what should we name this? What should we do? And, you know, we actually came up with the logo first, which is a pirate's face. And it's got the two butcher knives underneath of it crossing instead of swords, you know, and then we were like, well, what can we do with this? And we thought, you know, the flying Dutchman, you know, everybody knows who that is, right. You know, or they, they know something about it, whether it's just the name or they actually know the story and the story, it's about a legendary ship that was stuck in a storm outside of a port. And, the uh, pilot boats wouldn't come out to meet it to bring it into the port. So they had to wait. They had to wait out the storm. And eventually the, the ship disappeared and there were no survivors and nobody really knows what happened to it. But then it divulged, divulged into this story that was, you know, all of the crew, they were banished to never be able to step foot on land again. And they were stuck at sea on this boat with their crew members. Um, so we were like, you know, well, we're about to spend, you know, 12, 15, 18 hours a day together. So we're kind of banished onto the same ship and stuck together, whether we're, you know, we're in this mood or that mood, or we're going through this or going through that. So in a sense, we are banished to the boat, but we wanted to not be so mysterious because we wanted to be a part of everything, but we wanted to do it with us giving back and through giving back is kind of just making sure that our food is of quality, making sure that we are there, making sure that, you know, we have a smile on our face and we are who we really are because again, we're doing something that most people dream of doing or, you know, they want to do, they want to chase their dreams and they might not have the means to do it or they might not have the opportunities to do it or the drive, but here we are and we're doing it. And, you know, that's the greatest part for us, but that's, that's really where the hungry Dutchman came from. It's just, we look at ourselves as modern day pirates. Um, you know, especially once we lost our jobs, we were like, well, you know, here we go. We're bums. We don't have a job. We you know, no money coming in and we got to make this work. And, how are we going to do this? And so it was kind of just scraping by and, you know, we felt like pirates and, and that's, that's really where the story came from. And just we're a trio, you know, it's the three musketeers, but it's on the water. 
So when you launched, did you have like an event or did you just open and start business and start trying to just sell sandwiches to people? Like what was this, that situation like? Um, I mean, you know, one day we just looked at each other and we we're like, you know, should we uh, go do this? And we we're like, all right, let's give it a shot and just see. So we actually just went out, went to the sandbar and just started. And, you know, we were hustling, passing out flyers and menus. And, you know, there was no grand opening. There was no party, you know, per se. So it's just been word of mouth and us actually being out there like a street team just passing out passing out you know you know letting everybody know who we are and where we are and you know now even though we're only in our fifth week um i mean the 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 people who know us now you know they're expecting us to be out there so it's it's working Mm -hmm. and to see it turn around is like you know oh man you know like those first couple of of weeks we're like man you know this is pretty scary where we we're, we're not having too too much luck you know but again it's just the beginning we're a baby um, let's wait and see what happens. And, you know, every time we go out, it gets better than the last time, you know, better than the last week. So we're seeing that progress happen, but that was purely off of, of us running around and hustling. And then, you know, coincidentally, you know, I had to wait a year and a half for the naked and afraid episode to actually air. Um, but it was crazy because it all fell on the same weekend. So it was like, we opened up this business and then I had the airing. And then, you know, I had some of this exposure, you know, with the newspapers where they were wanting to talk to me and, you know, know the story and stuff like that. And they found out, you know, hey, what are you doing nowadays? And, well, you know, I have a food boat. And they're like, wait, we want to know. <laughs> yeah. And like, this is cool. You know, so it was like double whammy. And I mean, that that helped. I mean, I'm not going to say that that didn't help. Publicity is publicity. And, you know, when you're a new business or a new band or anything like that, you know, it's it's something that is desired and wanted <laughs> huge you know, dude so i mean it, it's helped honestly like when i found out that you'd not obviously the naked and afraid thing was why why i noticed you know you didn't wanted you to come on mm-hmm. but then mm-hmm. when i found out you were you had a food boat i was like wait that's like <laughs> way cooler like, like come on dude it just sounds so cool it, i mean yeah there's there's what water taxis there's there's you know yeah. those kinds of yeah. things but like it reminds me of a story back in the day. Um, Darren Doan, our, uh, he's a video director. Uh, he, he did like punk rock show and teenage politics and stuff like that. All right, all right. Um, anyway, he, he told us a story when they were in high school. I don't know if it was high school. No, it was like right after high school. They were just young. They were young. Um, Darren was probably like 18 to 20 in there. And they were hanging <laughs> out down, you know, where they live, which is Southern California. And, and one day, you know, one night, uh, Fletcher from Pennywise c- c- comes by and he's like, Darren, let's go. All right, come on. And they get in a boat and they go out to this, they steal a boat. <laughs> they go out to this, <laughs> like, I don't know. It's like a, a, a kitchen at sea. I don't mm-hmm. really understand that. Cause I'm not from down there. So I don't know what it is, but it's like a kitchen at sea where there's a restaurant and they break into it and he makes all this food and they're eating all this food. And then oh, wow. he's like, we're, we're pirates, but we're cool pirates. So he leaves like a <laughs> bunch of money. So he like leaves like a couple hundred, uh, hundred dollars to pay for all this yeah. stuff. Even that's pretty gnarly though. Like if you Absolutely. get there and somebody's like cooked in your kitchen, but that's just what Fletcher did, you know, does anyway. Yeah. So just, just hearing that. And then they, they took the boat back to a different Harbor and Mm -hmm. got picked it you know took a taxi home or something like that so like modern day pirates that that story always pops into my head but uh you guys are a little 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 more (laughs) a little more on the level but uh, i don't know man you know getting into other people's kitchens and cooking that's a that's a good story (laughs) yeah oh man there's so many stories it's crazy but um i want to hear i want to hear about naked and afraid you know um I, I haven't seen the episode, but we're we're probably gonna sp- spoiler alert. We're gonna we're gonna talk about the episode, and uh, being on, you know, me being on, say like as on Fixer Upper, me and my wife. Mm, um, yes. I yes. know exactly what you mean about sort of like having that other weird thing that people can talk about, you know, because people mm-hmm. tr- they tripped out when they would see me from their punk rock days 
on Fixer Upper. They're like, what? I'm so confused. Like, but once they got the idea of it, it was like, okay, I get this. So uh, I think that could be really big for you, honestly. Like, keep, keep going with the Naked and Afraid thing because that just aired recently. That's this year. And yes. I think the, the whatever the, the effect that that has, the ripple effect, mm-hmm. it's hard to feel that. And I'm not saying you should feel that or want to feel that. But, I, but in a business sense, you can really use that um, to get word out about what you're doing now, which you're already 100%. doing. hundred <laughs> percent. I mean, I've got, you know, I'm, I'm, I've been so blessed to have this opportunity and, you know, I ran it and uh, most folks don't know, you know, little spoiler alert. Um, when I was actually out on Naked and Afraid, the day that I got put out there on, for insertion. So the day that you strip down into your, your birthday suit and, you know, you give away all your belongings and everything like that. Uh, I actually got a phone call and it was, uh, it was my ex and she was like, you know, Hey, uh, yeah, I'm leaving you. We're not doing this anymore. I'm taking the house. I'm taking this. <laughs> and it was after 12 years. So I was like, Oh my God, what was going on? So I got thrown into this challenge. And when I had returned, I literally came back to nothing. And, uh, you were actually doing like live, uh, live stuff on Instagram and Facebook during that time. It was right after COVID. Mm -hmm. And, um, I think you were doing like Thursdays or Tuesdays or something. And, uh, you did a shout out. You were like Mike Fort Lauderdale. So I tapped in the bottom and I was like, what's up, Mike? And I was like, holy shit, you know? So now it's kind of like a fluffer. And, you know, before I was saying that I was listening to, or I was singing in my head, um, um, you know, the songs from MXPX, and that's what kept, kept me going. Can't Keep Waiting and some of these other ones. And uh, so it was just like an ultimate challenge the whole way through. And then when I had the opportunity to do this business, I was like, you know, what do I have to lose? You know, like, let's do it. But if we're going to do it, we're going to do this big. We're going we're gonna to really try. You know, so it's been great. You know, you get, ball, you know, left balls or curved balls thrown your way left and right. And, uh yeah, it's just, you just, you got to overcome. And that's one of the reasons why I did the challenge. You know, I've always liked being outdoors. I've always liked that, but I like challenges and I like putting myself in those situations and, you know, just seeing how strong a person can really be and come out on top, you know? So Mm -hmm. it it was a good thing, you know? I mean, everything happens for a reason. And from the moment that I got accepted to go on that show, it was like one thing after another, just bam, 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 bam. But when looking back, those are the best things that could have ever happened because I wouldn't be here doing the thing that I'm doing right now, you know, and uh, we wouldn't be here having this conversation. <laughs> so, right. Something's work. Something's working. Yeah. <laughs> I mean, that's something's heavy working. to go uh, into that situation yeah. with that much emotional and mental, uh, just, I guess, negative energy, you know, oh, yeah. um, change, a lot of change happening, a lot of unknown. I think anxiety really is like the fear of the unknown, right? And so 100%. you're not only naked. I mean, like, that's like the worst yeah. thing for everybody. You're <laughs> naked, but yeah. you're, you're dealing with it with a, a very uh, tough situation emotionally and, me- you know, mentally, I guess you could say, um, of man. I mean, how, how did that make it that much harder for you, Michael? Like, um, or was it a good thing? Not a good thing no, that that happened, but a good thing that you were on the show. I don't know. It, it, it was tough because, you know, you're out there and, you know, you go out there for a certain reason and then some, something comes up, you know, and it's the negative or whatever. And it's on your mind the whole time while you're out there, mm-hmm. you know, it's like, <clears throat> okay, well, where's my stuff going to be? You know, what's going to happen to my, my pets? You know, what's going to happen to all my guitars and, you know, things like that. And, you know, yeah, those are all things that, you know, you can do without for a little bit or whatever, but it's this life that you built. So it was always on your mind and you, you, you really have to try to push it out. So it was a challenge. It was, you know, you're out here, you're starving, you know, things don't really go your way out there, especially where we were. Um, you know, and so it's just a struggle on top of a struggle. And it was really hard, you know, because I was sitting there trying to keep my shit together. And then I had a partner who was also very emotional during that time. And she had never been out in the wild or camping or anything like that. So she was really struggling with it. So I was trying to keep, you know, her mental state, you know, up high and uplifted. And then here I'm trying to do mine as well. And it was like, uh, some days you wake up and you're like, you know, should I really be doing this? Because I've got unfinished business at home. 
you know, and you're kind of torn with that feeling, but, you know, it was never, it was never a question of, I should have never came here because again, it was one of the best things that had happened for me, you know? So I look at it as a blessing and I had some of the most, ex- the most beautiful experiences ever out there. I mean, there was one day I went out and I hiked for about eight or nine hours by myself in the Kalahari desert. And, um, you know, it's just two crew members, you know, two, two people filming you and, you know, you can't talk to them. They can't talk to you kind of deal. And I mean, I saw herds of like 150 gazelle and, you know, spring, spring rocks and stuff like that, just running around. So at the same time that my life is in all this chaos and, you know, my mind is here, I'm also being shown these really, really amazing and beautiful things that it's just like, you know, Hey, yeah, things are bad, but you know, wake up, you know, like things are great. You know, you just got to look at it a certain way. Um, yeah. so, you know, so that was one of the things that I learned, you know, while I was out there. But challenge uh, from the beginning to the stu- you know, to the end. Um, but you still got to try. You still got to try. You know, and that's all I told myself was keep going, keep going, keep trying, keep trying. I <laughs> I got to ask some weird questions. Like, <laughs> yeah, man, go ahead. I mean. <laughs> I, I want to know, like, okay, when you're you're naked, <laughs> you're naked. Okay, so when you're on the hike, you're just naked the whole time. I, I from the time that you take your clothes off, when you leave the truck, you are naked until you are finished. And even when you're sleeping, or do you like? Can you put like some like? Bl- is there blankets when you're sleeping? What's the sleeping situation like? You are without clothes. <laughs> you're sleeping without clothes. It, you, you're you're cuddling with a person who you've never met before, and you know you're you're skin to skin, <laughs> and you know survival. Us- What's that? Oh no, did we lose? Oh, it's no, breaking up. Yeah. Sorry, you're back. You're back. Okay, skin to skin, um, somebody you yes, don't know. Skin, skin to skin, somebody we don't know, and it got down to thirty degrees while we were out there, so it got cold, and um. You know, for the first while that we were out there, they didn't help at all. They were like, no, you guys are, it's going to pass, it's going to pass. And it didn't pass. And they ultimately ended up helping us out with a, a uh, uh, like a antelope hide mm-hmm, mm-hmm. or antelope skin. And because uh, they were just so concerned about hypothermia. And they were like, look, if you guys don't accept this, we're going to have to pull you guys out because it's just too cold. You know, so eventually they did. Um, you know, if you never watch a show and you watch it once and you think it's fake or you think that they help you at all, they do not help you at all. I mean, you are you are on your own. Um, you know, so even at night they leave. They stay a couple of miles away from you, you know, so you're really on your own. And, you know, for us, we had gotten attacked by a couple of animals while we were out there at night. And uh, I mean, just. OK waiting and waiting and waiting for them to come and help us because we're stuck under a bush and we have lions and rhinos attacking us. Are you kidding? Yeah, okay. So. You got, we need more details on this. Like what happened? Oh so, my God. Uh, every You're night, in Africa, by the way, you're in South Africa yeah. in uh-huh. the, uh, what is it? The, the Ka- Kalahari desert. Kalahari. Okay. Kalahari desert. So it's nothing but scrubland. So there's no trees or anything like that. It's just all big thorny bushes. And, um, Every night, you know, you would hear the lions come closer and closer. They'd be killing stuff in the distance and you could hear it. And then uh, by like day three or four, they started coming to our boma every single night. All right. Boma is our shelter. That's what they call it there in in Africa. Okay. Uh, So it's literally just a hole under a bush (laughs) is what it is. Um, And the lions would stick their paws in and, you know, whatever. It was okay the first couple of nights. And then there was one night where the rhinos actually came. And it was a group of them. And they had actually charged into the boma. So they were, their heads were inside over, you know, if we were laying down, like when my partner woke me up, I was laying down. She slapped my chest. And she's like, you know, damn, 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 uh, Mike, there's, there's, there's something here that the lions are here, you know. It's one of the first nights I fell asleep and actually got sleep. And I woke up and, you know, you've got this big, I don't know how much they weigh, maybe four to 8,000 pounds. And, you know, you just feel the hot breath just breathing on your body. And they're making noise. You're making noise. It's pissing them off. And they're going crazy. And 
I mean, you just don't know what to do. I mean, I, I've never been so scared in my life <laughs> like I was that night. Uh, but, I mean, we survived. And it's an awesome experience that I can tell people and they'll be like, no way. I can't, yeah. <laughs> It's I insane. Mean, you watch those shows like on reality TV, like Alone. I've watched Alone a lot. Yes. And yes. that's like up in Alaska usually, and there's bears that come, and you're just like, that's a bear. And they got lucky. But mm-hmm. that's basically what you're doing. I mean, lions are in your boma, <laughs> up yeah, your man. boma. <laughs> yeah, man. They're there. They're, they are. I mean, what are you going to do? I mean, you know, yeah, we had spears and stuff like that, you know, that we had crafted but mm-hmm. i mean what's it really going to do against a, a rhinoceros or a lion a lion that really wants to eat you <laughs> it's right. not going to do much so you're you're on your own did you own. did you use the spear against any animals did you like stick any animals um you know because it was so cold uh, a lot of the animals they were hunkered down and so they were staying away from us for a while um so we didn't i mean we we lived off of you know uh two mice that we caught in our traps a bird a scorpion um some bone marrow from a lion kill that i found um and that that, and a lizard that was pretty much it what was uh the best thing that we were like that was actually was pretty good oh actually the scorpion the scorpion was good scorpion was good man (laughs) scorpio If there was ever, yeah, are, are you a Scorpio? I am. All right, I am too. I am <laughs> too. <are>. Scorpio <laughs> power. Cheers. <laughs> no wonder it was it tasted good. Exactly. No, but they, uh, it was like, it was honestly like a lobster. Oh, I mean, yeah. That, it yeah. was just like that. I mean, if I had a little bit of butter, it would have been amazing. <laughs> but yeah, Scorpion, if you haven't tried it, you might want it. Nice. I like that. Um, so what was the worst thing? What? What do you think? Uh, the worst thing was actually the lizard, I think. The lizard, lizard which was kind of like chewy and gummy, you know, kind of deal. Um, yeah, it was just kind of, we made like a soup with it. Mm. And it just kind of like got real gummy. And I don't know, it was just kind of weird the texture was. Otherwise, it didn't taste like anything. But it was just the, the <clears throat> I guess the texture. Texture, yeah. Mostly, you know. But um, I mean, we had a bird. The bird was pretty good. You know, um, it was a little burnt, but, you know, it still did the job. But that was about it. Um, so I would have to say scorpion. Scorpion, huh? Nice. And, okay, so how, as far as, like, water or um, that kind of stuff, are you guys, and fire. I mean, so what was the situation? Did you build your own fire, all that? Yeah, um, we had to build our own fire. The The wood was... A type of wood I've never dealt with before is the hardest wood ever to cut through. Um, And it burns so quick, you know, and so it was like no matter how much wood you had that you thought was okay for the night, it wasn't okay for the night because when that sun came up, you were pretty much on your last leg of, you know, your wood pile. Mm -hmm. Um, And then the water was a different story. The water, I mean, if if I was going to get sick from something, I would have guessed it was going to be the water just because it was a tiny little watering hole. It was the only watering hole for about 30 mile uh, radius around us. And so everything came there and, you know, drank and pooped and pissed and, you know, that kind of stuff in the water. So it was like, a, by the time we got done boiling, it was like chunky chocolate milk and you had to use your teeth to strain it kind of stuff. So. Oh, dude. Yeah. So like what, I mean, is this breaking down your, like your, your spirit in a way? Like, there's no internet, there's no phone, you know, there's nothing, there's no distractions, right? So you have survival and you have your own thoughts. 100%. Now, I mean, what, okay, so you're talking about straining brown water. Boy, (laughs) is the water, do you, is it warm? Is it hot still when you're drinking it? Are you just like, screw it? Or do you get it cold? somehow no i mean if you wanted it to get cold it would take like you know three hours or something like that it would take a while so i mean it was just kind of you were drinking ultimately tea you know because it was hot you know but also your body wanted it so bad so you didn't really want to wait you know and so yeah it was always warm i mean when i'd gotten back to civilization you know and i i saw water and it was clear and i drank the water and it was cool and i was like 
all right, yes, this is this is refreshing. You know, like <laughs> the the whole drinking the hot water the whole time was kind of like I know I'm drinking water, but it doesn't feel like I'm drinking water. Yeah, because it's not cool, you know. So it's kind of like a mind fuck almost, you know. Yeah, I mean that's gotta just like change your perspective in so many ways now that you're back in 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 modern civilization. Oh yeah, and things that one we don't need, things mm -hmm. that we take for granted that we don't necessarily need, but really are nice to have. Obviously, running water, electricity, the yes. basics. Yes. Um, I just can't get over the brown water, honestly. I keep thinking about the brown water and the chunky mud or whatever. Um, so, it wasn't mud, man. It was chunks of poop. Dude. Poop, poopy. Oh, my God. Okay. So, yeah. okay, so you, so they, they drop you off in a truck, and you've got um, – do, do they give you, like, a, any like one pan? Do they give you, like, anything like that? Yeah, they give you – like, you're able to bring an item – and uh, so I had brought paracord. Um, we had brought a fire starter, and then we were given a pot to boil the water. Um, you know, so they they give you one item each other. You know, each contestant has to bring one of their own personal items. So you do go out there with something, but you got to choose it wisely. And you brought what was your personal item? Uh, it was par paracord. Paracord. I don't even know paracord. what that is. <laughs> uh, it's just like it's, it's a cord. You know, it's, it's just string. It's just yeah. string. Oh, you can <laughs> you can tie things together, build things. Correct. Yeah, Correct. Okay. Yeah. Yeah. So make traps and stuff like that. Um, you know, if you just bring a bow and you don't bring a fire starter, and you don't know how to make fire, you know, primitively, you're kind of in a rut. You know, so it's like, yeah, that bow would be really good because I could get something, I could kill something, and you know, survive off of it. But how am I going to cook it? You know, so you really got to pick what you want. You really got to hope that your partner brings something worthwhile as well what did your partner bring for this um one? she had brought fire starter fire starter okay yeah yeah she had brought Jeez, fire you guys don't get much i mean fire no. starter what you know cord and then you're you have your pan correct and so you have to boil the water there's no fanciness there's no nope. there's nothing to keep it in except for the pot right exactly so it's like you know as soon as you warm it up you got to drink it so you can refill it and heat it up again yeah so it's constantly getting water, constantly getting wood. I, it, what's funny is like most, I mean, most people would never want to talk about the, I guess like <laughs> the, the my minuscule little details. But I kind of like, I like the, what were they doing behind the camera thing? Like what were they doing right when they turned off the camera? You know, that kind of stuff. Um, and so like, I always think about that, especially nowadays when you, you kind of realize a lot of, reality tv in general is somewhat scripted is this and that yeah. and and i and i know that you know there's there are some that aren't you know and um for yours you're just you're just trying to challenge yourself like what was your motivation going into this um my motivation going into this was just you know i've uh i've had a couple of accidents growing up that really challenged me and kind of took away my independence for a while um, you know, so between that, it's just, I've always wanted to challenge myself and to at least try things, you know what I'm saying? Like you can't, you can't win or succeed unless you actually give it a shot, you know? And, um, you know, when I was 12, I was hit by a car, broke both my legs, had head trauma. I don't remember anything from my past from 12 years on or 12 years old and earlier. So the childhood thing kind of got wiped out. Um, you know, even my parents all show me pictures of, you know, places we've been or things I've done. And I'll be like, you know, I have no recollection of when or where that took place or anything like that, you know. So that was hard. And that kind of, that was like at the beginning of my teenage years, you know. So it was like, who am I? Wow. You know what I'm saying? Yeah. So you have to like go through this searching process. And that's where like music fell into a big thing for me. And it was like, you know, I had this outlet um of expression through these lyrics and these chord progressions and you know just amazingness and you know that made me feel comfortable and then you know picked up instruments and started playing them and then when i was about 22 um i had a weird freak accident that pretty much severed um eight out of ten of my fingers um and 
so again, my independence was taken away because I had to depend on everybody to feed me, to clean me, to you know do this, do that. And I was just like, you know, no. You know, they had told me originally that they were just going to leave the fingers off. They were like, you know, it's 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 going to be too extensive to do this. And I was like, no, like guys, you know, like I I'm a musician at that time. You know, I've always played music. Like that's my outlet for making me feel good. You know, making me feel better. And um, they were like all right, we'll give it a shot and we'll see what we can do. But, you know, we're going to tell you now that we're probably going to have to bring you back in and take them off in a couple of weeks. And um, long story short, they, they got them on. Um, I started playing around with the guitar again the first week that I was out of the hospital. Um, you know, went to bass again. And two years later, I've got no limitations. And, you know, I can play everything I want to play. I can do what I want to do. And, and it didn't hold me back. So it was just those those kinds of things that just really made me uh want to just keep going and push myself and you know push yourself to a certain point you know you, you do have to be smart about things and you can't just run headfirst into everything and you know think everything is going to be okay um you know you do have to walk with caution um but it was just the challenge you know it was, it was up my alley and the one thing that I missed the most while I was out there was actually music. You know, I could deal without the food and, you know, this kind of stuff and the cars and the noise from the airplanes and, you know, but it was the music that I was just like, man, like, I wish I had, you know, some headphones and a, and a cell phone, you know, or Spotify or, you know, who, whatever platform you listen to. And uh, that was constantly on my mind, you know, it was just music and music, music and when I got out, the first thing I did was listen to music, and I was like, "All right, yes, I'm, I'm coming back to life here. You know, I'm all right." You know, but it's a challenge. That's awesome. Yeah, that's awesome, dude. I, I mean, I feel like there's too many questions I could ask, but um, <laughs> <laughs> I mean, you had your fingers severed. Like that's intense. Like yeah. it, it feels like, and, and and your your childhood is erased. Like that's got to be so heavy. And then yeah. going into this, like. I feel like everybody needs an experience like this, like the naked and afraid thing. Like what was psychologically or, or did you have a problem being naked all the time? Like, what was that like that for you? <laughs> um, I, I didn't, you know, I'm, I'm okay. You don't care. <laughs> I mean, if uh, the video was working on here, you know, I'd get to work now. Uh, <laughs> <laughs> Sorry, ladies. Sorry about that. You missed out. That's we'll it. get you back. But uh, no, I mean, the close thing, you know, I, I I was usually the wild, you know, punk kid who was running down the street naked at the parties or something, you know. Um, oh, yeah. or just, I have a few of those friends. Yeah. <laughs> I was I was one of those, you know, so okay. the close things, I'm OK with it. But the most annoying part was, uh, you know, when, when we had to get into our shelter, we had to go down on all fours and crawl into it. And, you know, you got this big old camera right at your booty hole while you're crawling over there and you know it's kind of like all right guys you know i'm pretty sure after a week you guys got enough of these shots you know you think you lay up and they're like hey bud look um you know we don't really want to be staring at this all day but we kind of have to it's our job <laughs> so it's like yeah all right get the shot that you need you know <laughs> they can't miss any if they miss something and something happens they're like you you had one job <laughs> yeah exactly. <laughs> exactly get the booty hole <laughs> Exactly. Get the booty hole. So you got to give it up at some point, I guess. I don't know. That's what I was told. Dude, <laughs> that's insane. Yeah, well, dude, I mean, am I missing any questions about this naked and afraid thing? Like, I, I feel like somebody's screaming like, yeah, but I want to know this. I always do that because uh, I, I don't do very good research on. <laughs> uh, dude, you're you're, you've asked a lot. man. You're, you're, you're pretty cute. You're going to go and watch this. You're going to watch this in the next month or so and be like, what the hell is going on here? <laughs> I am going to watch it, and I am definitely going to watch it. Uh, it's season fifteen, episode five of Naked and Afraid. This it's it's yeah. out. It just came out like a month ago or something, right? Like yeah, maybe in yeah. the last. Uh, yeah. I was told it was on Disney Plus by Bob, the producer. <laughs> I don't think it is. <laughs> <laughs> no, it's on it's on Discovery, Discovery it's on Plus. Discovery. Okay, yeah. I think uh, <laughs> when you have TV like regular real TV, yeah. It's all the same. It's like Discovery Plus and, and yeah. Disney Plus. It's like right there or something. Yeah. I'm guessing. It's all crazy. We, there's so many platforms nowadays. It's crazy. <laughs> we'll find it. Uh, yeah. yeah. 
I'll, I'll find a Hulu password. I don't have Hulu either, but I think it's on Hulu as well. If you need to log in, if you need to log in for Discovery Plus, <laughs> shoot, shoot me an email. I got you. <laughs> it's all good. Yeah, yeah, yeah. yeah. Well, uh, yeah, I'll have to hook you up too, buddy. We'll, yeah. we'll 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 hang out when we're back down in Florida. I have no idea when we'll be down there, but I'm I don't think it'll be too crazy long. So I hope so. I hope so. I, hope I mean, look. Yeah, go ahead. You, you guys got to keep going, man. Like I love the fact that you guys are still like. I mean, I've, I've tooth and nails, man. You know what I'm saying? Like back in the day, I was, I was hooked. And, you know, like looking back 25 something years later and I'm like, yeah, man, you know, like I love this band, you know, and to see you guys doing the live things during coronavirus or, you know, whatever was amazing. I mean, like people couldn't see you guys live, you know what I'm saying? But you guys came into our living rooms and you did it. And it was like. Uh, amazing amazing you know like keep going with the music you guys touch a lot of people you guys you know lyrics the music you know even the banter between you guys and everything like that is just it's always hitting to somebody and i you know you guys should know that a lot because you guys you know work 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 and you know pump out all this stuff for all your amazing fans and you know i don't know if you guys always get it back you know and i'm sure going to shows and you know people singing your lyrics and stuff like that is awesome because you know that it's working and stuff but there are many people tucked in that crowd that are listening for different reasons and stuff so i appreciate you guys i'm so glad that you guys you know came together and here we are 20 plus years later and you know i I could sit here and fangirl out and say (laughs) i was sitting here with you talking you know and i'm like oh my god um you know because you you are one of the reasons why i got into bass and stuff like that and you know i was just like man these riffs are just freaking awesome and they sound amazing and i was like i want to do that you know and and so it's cool man i appreciate you and i appreciate the guys and uh all the hard work that you guys do you know dude thank you so much that means the world to me i love that just you mentioning the live stream thing that really that really was a special time that that i feel like yeah it's gonna fade in time but um hopefully hopefully you know people will will come back you know we have that new working on new music right now and yeah you know i you know i don't want to say too much but yeah we're working on that new music um man dude thank you thank you i I love that we got to talk and i love that that you're doing this the hungry dutchman where can people i mean find either what whatever you want people to know if you want them to find you we'll put we'll put it up there if you want people to find the hungry dutchman where can people find that um, so the Hunger Dutchman, we're on Facebook, we're on Instagram, um, www.thehungerdutchmanfl.com, um, <clears throat> and it's the same thing with uh, Facebook and Instagram, hungerdutchman.com. Cool. Uh, you know, so check us out, like us. If not, and you're a Florida resident or you're visiting Florida, come to the Sandbar. There's only two Sandbars in Port Lauderdale. Can't miss our boat. Uh, we're pretty unique, so. And again, when you guys come down, you know, please, uh, I'll show you around on the water and I'll feed you some good food, man. <laughs> Deal. That sounds like a plan, man. I appreciate yep. it. Absolutely. All right. Thanks, everybody. Uh, Michael Angulo, thanks for yep. doing it. I appreciate yep. it. Yes. Also, Bob's amazing. I don't know where you found this guy, but uh, yeah, yeah, he's amazing, bro. Good. That's <laughs> glad proud. to hear. It's glad to hear Keep he's proud. not punishing you too much. <laughs> no, no, not at all. <laughs> not at all. Well, Mike, thank you so much for having me on and uh, taking the time to uh, talk. And just, I know you're a busy guy. And thank you, thank you, thank you, thank you. Hey, thank you. Uh, stay safe, you know, as the floods flood down in Florida. <laughs> I hope it, it yeah. dissipates soon. All right. <laughs> yeah. All right. Peace out, y'all. All right, man. Peace out, man. Take thank care. you so much. Cheers. Peace, everybody.